All right, it is Friday. Um, thanks for joining me, guys. If you like this and listen to the replay, be sure to share it below. Let other people know about this if it helps them out with their exams and their studying habits. Um, today, I, I, I titled this the NREMT exam. It's either easy or it's hard, right? And most people find it that way. It's it's either they find it very easy when they take the test coming out of it, or they find that it was very hard or it was, or it was very challenging. Now, I did an interview with the associate director of the National Registry a little while ago, and I have a little excerpt here that I had transcribed. I want to read it to you. Um, this is actually the, the entire thing is included in the EMS exam uh, formula. I have a link to that in the notes in case you want to go ahead and check that out and get the full transcript of this. It's one of the bonuses inside of that course. But what it is is that I asked him about that, the easy versus hard, right? And he noted that that he feels as well a lot of people experience that, okay? And a lot of people come out of it feeling that it was, you know, that it was easy or another person might come out feeling that it was uh, pretty challenging. He feels the reason for that, and what he said was, is that the the item difficulty, right, the question difficulty that's adapting, the computer adapting of nature of the exam. So he feels the item difficulty is adapting to that person's um, ability level, right, the individual ability level of the person taking the test. So he said no matter what ability level you're at, you're going to probably get about half of the items right, and about half of the items wrong. Now think about that for a second. You start feeling you're getting half of the stuff wrong when you're taking the test, right? That's going to mess with your mind a little bit. You're going to start stressing out. You're going to start getting anxious that you're failing the test, right? So that's something to keep in mind when you're taking the National Registry, the adaptive test in particular, right? Think about that. If you start feeling you're getting a lot of stuff wrong, don't panic, okay? Don't panic. You have to rely on the fact of your, of your knowledge and what you're doing and also the knowledge of how the exam works. And a lot of people don't really kind of fully grasp how the National Registry exam works. And this is where they end up messing up, where they end up failing, where they end up, end up sort of struggling, okay? And that's something I do in the, in the course that I mentioned earlier. I try to help people get past that, help them understand the test itself, and also building their knowledge base so that when they sit down for the test, they can succeed better. Now, what he mentioned, again, half might, they might feel like getting half of them wrong, half of them right, okay? And he talked a little bit more about that later on in the um, episode and later on in the, in the interview that I did, uh, how they determine the passes and the fails, right? But it, keep, keep in mind, it's it's not the percentage of items that you're getting right or wrong, okay? He said that it's actually the questions that you get right and wrong, not the percentage of questions. So people are used to coming out of an exam, again, feeling they've got 40-50% of their items incorrect. So as a result of that, the people that have taken that, that adaptive exam feel they were significantly challenged by the test, right? So he said that this is why he thinks a lot of people walk out and they feel that it was either generally um, easy or most of the time he feels that the people that do that, that feel it was, that it was easy, he kind of said in a roundabout way, but pretty much those are the people that fail, okay? Because he says that the people that come out feeling that the exam was generally easy, they didn't read the items carefully enough, all right? And items mean the questions and the answers, all right? So they might have missed them because they failed to recognize new things that might be there, all right, within the item itself. So they, they get to, let's say, choice B, and they stop there. But meanwhile, choice C and D might have been a more correct answer, might have been a better choice for the items that are there. So one thing that he encourages people taking the exam to do is to slow down, to make sure that they're taking and reading each individual item, to read it carefully, and to make sure that they understand it completely and that they're not answering the right answer to the wrong question. I think it's a very important thing to think about. We, I've mentioned this in previous videos about best answer, right answer, stuff like that, and how the National Register even gives you the answer. I mentioned that in previous videos as well. But it's very important what he says here, right? I'm going to repeat it real quick. To read every item very carefully, to make sure that you understand it completely. And the item meaning, again, the question or the answers that are given. And that 
to make sure that the people taking the exam, that they're not answering the right answer to the wrong question. And I, I told them, I said, a lot of people that email me or contact me, I try to tell them that from what I understand from the exam and my research of the exam and stuff like that, that it is designed to make you feel as if it's hard. All right. And I try to tell them that the questions are based more on the general knowledge that they're supposed to have and the skill level that they're actually testing for. So I had him kind of break down a little bit for me. I don't want to go too long on this and read the entire transcript, guy, but I kind of had him break down a little bit as well on how the adaptive exam chooses questions. And I don't want to give him away too many, you know, kind of inner secrets of the NREMT or anything. But I wanted him kind of to delve a little bit deeper on how, because I kind of felt how are people being fairly judged taking the exam, right? If all these students are taking the exam, and people come out of it feeling like they, they it was too hard for them. It wasn't fair. It wasn't a fair questions. It wasn't fair overall, right? And I try to get him to kind of expand on that. That even though some exams it might be easier for some people, it might be harder for others. And basically because your knowledge base might not be as thorough as somebody else going into it, right? The people that find it a little bit easier or not as challenging. So he went into more of that uh, in that um, that episode. And again, you can check that out in the uh, exam formula. Again, it's one of the bonuses there uh, along with a lot of other content. That really, it's really good to help you. Uh, succeed in your exam. So listen, I'm going to end it there, guys. I hope it really just kind of helped you a little bit, maybe brings into focus some of the difficulties and really, more importantly, how the National Registry itself is looking at candidates, is looking at students coming in and taking the test. Okay, I think that's important to kind of to, to take away from this video today is that it's not what somebody else said or what you might have heard or whatever. It ends up being more what Again, this is this is an associate director from uh, uh, the National Direct National Registry, Greg Mongolians at the time, and he really went into this with me, uh, probably about an hour or so of uh, content there on kind of dispelling some of the myths and how the National Registry looks looks at candidates and looks at the exams that they're putting out there, and that they're not trying to trick anybody. Uh, it's just a method to try to get the best candidates to make sure people taking the test truly understand the content that they're being tested on. So uh, again, go check out the formula if you're interested. It's at emssco.com forward slash formula. If not, guys, I hope these videos are really helping you. Be sure to share them if you feel they are. Um, and have a great weekend. As always, I am Jim Hoffman from emssco.com. Stay safe.